Good evening. We're back with more Marvel Champions, and this evening we'll be doing a Hero Spotlight for Scarlet Witch. We'll be looking at two different Scarlet Witch decks, both of them leadership. The first one you see here on the screen and is a pretty standard leadership list, at least standard according to my standards of what I usually run. We've got just the strongest leadership allies, Beast, Kalu, Maria Hill, White Tiger. And I like to run Ironheart and Spider-Man Miles Morales. And then we've got Make the Call, Summoning Spell, United We Stand, Rapid Response, Spiritual Meditation, and the Sorcerer Supreme. The second deck we'll be looking at is a Mighty Avengers version of Scarlet Witch which features Captain America, Captain Marvel, Falcon, Giant Man, Goliath, the expensive Avengers, and then we also have Quinjet so that we can afford them. I like this deck a little bit better for Scarlet Witch than the standard leadership deck. I think that the high cost allies work well with her chaos magic and that the mighty Avengers makes the Avengers leadership deck a little bit better than the non-Avengers leadership deck, deck in general. And I don't see a lot of Mighty Avengers decks on Marvel CDB, so I hope to demonstrate in this video, at least anecdotally, why I believe Mighty Avengers is better. So let's move on to the gameplay. We will have several games featured in this video, and the first one is going to be Scarlet Witch versus Rhino on Heroic 1 difficulty. Playing against Rhino on the Heroic 1 difficulty is going to be the barrier to entry for most heroes. If a hero cannot defeat Rhino on Heroic 1, it's not that I am 100% guaranteed not to do a hero spotlight for them, but I'm going to prioritize the heroes that I consider to be the strongest or on the stronger side at least first. If a because I am interested in defeating the scenarios at as high a difficulty as possible, I make my recommendations for how to build heroes, for which heroes to get based on which heroes I believe are strong, with which heroes are fun to play being a secondary concern, way, way behind which heroes are strong. I'm mostly concerned with objective analysis of heroes and decks. And I'll make a note when I consider a hero fun, but I don't make any recommendations based on whether I consider a hero fun or not, purely based on whether they are strong. Because my goal is to give players information that will help you to defeat scenarios on a, as high a difficulty as possible, because without that kind of information, it's not going to be possible to beat all the quests in the game. My estimation is that in order to beat Expert Ronin reliably, Expert Ronin being the hardest scenario in the game, you have to be able to clear at least Rhino Heroic 2 or so. So if a hero can't even do Rhino Heroic 1, there is no way they have even a chance at completing all of the scenarios in the game. And I don't believe that that is Scarlet Witch's ceiling. But anyway, we'll see how she does against Rhino on Heroic 1 difficulty. We're using the standard leadership deck here, not the Mighty Avengers version. The Mighty Avengers version will come in later. So the strength of Scarlet Witch, she has a couple in terms of her resource generation. Resource generation is always, always, always going to be a key to a hero's success, at least currently. We don't really have any heroes in Marvel Champions that do really well that can't generate any resources beyond their standard 5 hand size. Scarlet Witch generates resources in a couple of ways. Hexbolt can draw cards. Sorcerer Supreme is a big one though. Sorcerer Supreme, a fantastic card for Mystic Trait heroes, a must have card. It boosts the hand size by one while in hero form. And we got it here in the opening hand and an easy way to play it with energy. The Hex Bolt is a very unreliable resource generator because it only draws a card or more than one card when you draw. When you get a boost card with two boost icons and there is really, without the Scarlet Witch's Crest, there's no real way to 
guarantee that. And even with Scarlet Witch's Crest, you can't guarantee it. We're getting out Nick Fury here and drawing three cards. And then we're going to play Genius and Hexbolt. And we'll see how the Hexbolt goes. Two boost icons, that means draw a card. So if you haven't seen Scarlet Witch before, the way that Hexbolt works is you discard three cards and then you have a variety of different effects that can happen based on the number of boost icons. One boost icon removes means remove two threat from a scheme and two boost icons means draw another card. So in that situation, Hexbolt paid for itself. It drew two cards, it cycled through the deck and it removed two threat. That's a great Hexbolt but it is highly RNG based. We don't always get that result and then we can play Maria Hill for two and draw a card and then we can remove the Breaking and Taken side quest and get some damage in. It's a very, very strong turn one from Scarlet Witch here. And Rhino's going to attack Nick Fury. And then we get two encounter cards since we are playing Heroic One difficulty. First up is going to be Master Plan, so we need a side quest. Scarlet Witch also has Chaos Magic, which is very, very good for resource generation slash cost reduction. But it's only one card in a 40 card deck, unfortunately. Chaos Magic and the Sorcerer Supreme are the two strongest cards that Scarlet Witch has access to, with Hexbolt coming after them. So relatively mild encounter cards. Here we're going to get out Summoning Spell. Summoning Spell is a very good card as well but highly RNG based. So we discard until we find an ally and then we put it into play. We don't get to trigger White Tiger's card draw because that only happens after you play White Tiger from your hand. So not that good of a summoning spell there. We got Chaos Magic, but we don't have any of our high cost allies to play it with. Well, that, in this deck, that would be Beast. But we can use it on a Molecular Decay. So first we'll get rid of the Hydra Mercenary so that we can then Chaos Magic and Molecular Decay the boss. So we gotta discard some cards to pay for the Molecular Decay. You discard three cards to pay for the Molecular Decay and then you get cost reduction of three and then we need to discard the top two cards and add the boost icons to the damage. So we up to eight damage for three costs, not bad. And then we can United We Stand to heal two allies for one, which means they can stay on the board a little bit longer. And we'll move on to the boss turn. So the attack from the boss will go on Maria Hill. And then we got two encounter cards coming. We got an advance. Rhino doesn't scheme for much, so advance isn't really that big of a deal. We'll add one threat, no big deal. And then I'm tough. Pretty mild encounter cards again. So, what do we want to do here? Likely play Kalu. And look at the top five cards of the deck and see if there is an event we can grab. There's Make the Call. And probably we'll play Molecular Decay here. Could make the call for Maria Hill though. We'll remove the toughness from Rhino. I'd probably use Power and All of Us and Molecular Decay to pay for Maria Hill. And then I'll use United We Stand. Perhaps after going into Phase 3 so that I can heal for 3 instead of 2. Yep, now I decide that I'm going to use Maria Hill for damage so I can push into Phase 3. Phase 3 stuns Scarlet Witch and then I can United We Stand to heal one from three different allies. Drawing six cards each round instead of five because of Sorcerer Supreme. And the boss attack will put on Kalu. And then two encounter cards. going to be charge 
and slipping sanity. So we'll just remove that from the game, exhausting Scarlet Witch. Now I'm thinking about whether I actually want to do that or if I want to discard the top five cards of the encounter deck because there's not a lot of boost icons in this particular scenario. But I think I decide to leave it. And we're going to flip back to hero mode, use a spiritual meditation. It's going to cycle through the deck, so that's one extra encounter card. We'll go again. Get rid of the Magic Shield, a card that I rarely play when I'm playing Scarlet Witch. And we'll get out Nick Fury and draw three cards. Nearly always draw three cards with Nick Fury, unless I'm in emergency mode. And we'll use Maria Hill for two. Use Nick Fury, remove toughness. White Tiger. And gonna Chaos Magic Beast in, which is gonna retire probably Maria Hill. So we gotta discard four cards from the encounter deck to pay for Beast. And we'll use Beast to grab a resource card. Which isn't really needed in this situation. So there's the four cards we discard for the Chaos Magic to pay for Beast. Gonna deal two damage with Beast and then Hex Bolt and see what we get. So we're moving along at a pretty good pace here. So that's a one that's gonna remove two threat. That's a two that's gonna draw a card. And then a three that's gonna add a status effect so a stun or confuse. And then we'll use strength to get out rapid response. And United we stand to heal three characters for one. Scarlet Witch doesn't need any healing, and then we'll draw up to six. Hexbolt is a hero action and not an attack, so we can do it while stunned. And that's going to be a cycle through the encounter deck, so one acceleration token on the main quest. Typically you need to beat Rhino on Heroic 1 before you get to the second acceleration token or you're in trouble. Thinking about whether I want to warp reality the Stampede or not. And I decide that I will. Though I'm not sure that that's the right decision and I did think about it because Nick Fury is going to die at the end of the round anyway. Oh, there's another Stampede, so that takes the question of whether it was the correct move, at least in hindsight, out of the way, but I don't know if that was correct to burn Warp Reality there, as opposed to just letting it go through, because Nick Fury was going to die at the end of the round anyway. Now I decide I'm going to Rapid Response Nick Fury back in and deal four damage. He still leaves at the end of the round. But you can get his enters play effect off again. And I'm going to exhaust Scarlet Witch to get rid of the stun so that I can then Molecular Decay for the victory. If not the victory, one of the allies can finish him off. And that's that. That is Rhino on Heroic 1 difficulty. The keys to this victory, Sorcerer Supreme turn 1 generated an additional resource, an additional card every round for the remainder of the game, and we got two strong plays of Chaos Magic off, one for three, one for four, and then the Hex Bolts added some nice card draw. We got two Nick Furies off for card draw, so we were able to cycle and generate resources very effectively in this one and that was how we got through Rhino. Heroes that can't generate resources really can't get through Rhino on Heroic 1, and there are quite a lot of heroes. I've tested nearly all of the heroes on Rhino against Rhino on Heroic 1, and a lot of them struggle. Definitely a lot of them struggle. If they struggle to generate resources, they struggle on Rhino on Heroic 1, and that's the case 
with most scenarios, if you struggle to generate resources, you're going to struggle. It's the key to Marvel Champions is generating resources, and the second way to win is typically strong defense. With offense being the third way, like an uh, aggression rushdown build is available on some scenarios, but generally generating a lot of resources is the most reliable way, with a strong defense build being the second most reliable way. Strong defense not being available to every hero, but it is available to some of them. So let's move on to the next scenario for Scarlet Witch, which is going to be Absorbing Man on Heroic 1 difficulty. So we're on to Absorbing Man. Going in order of difficulty, my opinion is that Absorbing Man is the next level up from Rhino in terms of the heroic level difficulty. There are some heroic scenarios that are a little bit easier than Rhino. I would say the second Green Goblin scenario, Risky Business, is pretty easy. Uh, the Two Towers scenario and the Wrecking Crew scenario are pretty easy. But they're not very much fun and they're not very much very good for evaluating heroes because of their mechanics. We got a early source for Supreme here again, which is great. And we get out Maria Hill and use Maria Hill and Scarlet Witch to take care of the side quest which is important to get rid of with early with absorbing man key to absorbing man is really not taking any undefended attacks we need to start with an environment and play as part of the when revealed effects from the beginning stage of the quest and so rhino here is going to get a toughness card because of the boost icon he does have the ice trait currently and his attack takes out maria hill we got two encounter cards since we're on heroic one difficulty. We got avalanche. We don't have a lightning resource in hand, so that means that it's going to be an indirect damage. And then the second encounter card is a new environment, which surges into another avalanche, which is going to be more indirect damage because we don't have any lightning icons to discard. For the player turn, we're just going to be hex bolting most likely. Unless I draw something else to do. So one threat is, or one icon is removing two threat, one icon is removing two threat, and two icons is drawing one card, and then we'll go ahead and hex bolt again. Well, actually, we may Marie, uh, go grab Maria Hill so that we have somebody to block the boss's attack, otherwise, we're going to be in trouble in a hurry. So we'll draw a card with Maria Hill, and go ahead and thwart for two. and use Scarlet Witch to get rid of the toughness on Absorbing Man, and then we'll draw up to... Should have drawn up to six there, I only drew up to five. That was a mistake in the enemy's favor. And the two encounter cards, the villain schemes for three. And then we got under fire, which is gonna be Omnimorph Duplication, so he's got the metal trait so he gets toughness and heals for one and one more encounter card which is caught off guard so rip sorcerer supreme that's a pretty big deal it's gonna put a severe hitch in the resource generation I'm gonna play nick fury here and draw three play spiritual meditation to cycle and you can get out a hex bolt here So we got remove two threat, draw a card, means we can play the other hex bolt, and then deal two damage, that'll get rid of the toughness. So we're not in a bad spot at the moment, except for losing Sorcerer Supreme. There we got a stun on the boss, remove two threat, and deal two more damage. Then we'll get two damage from Nick Fury. Now I decide I'd rather get a Confuse on the boss than a stun. So two damage from Nick Fury and one damage from Scarlet Witch. Then we'll flip over to Alter Ego and draw six. The reason why I'd rather get a Confuse than a stun there is because if I flip over to Alter Ego, I can draw an additional card, basically. And that's really the only reason. 
I just wanted to draw an extra card, so I chose Confuse instead of Stun. This Hex Bolt just says place a status card, so you can choose whatever status card you want. So we remove the Confuse from the boss, and then the two encounter cards, we exhaust Scarlet Witch and remove her obligation, and bring in a Hydra regular. So now we'll flip back to Hero Mode, use a Spiritual Meditation, discard the Magic Shield, Likely get out White Tiger. I play that card every time I draw it, if possible, because it cycles itself so effectively. Not cycles itself, but it, it cycles so effectively. And then this is a, an interesting situation with the summoning spell or the hex bolt. I choose the summoning spell. Not a lot of cards left in the deck, but it does pay off. Quicksilver is good value for the summoning spell. Then we can use Quicksilver to deal two damage, and then. White Tiger for two damage, get to ready Quicksilver with his action, and then deal two more damage, and then we'll draw four. That's going to be another encounter card coming in. So Absorbing Man's attack is going to go on White Tiger. And we got a Swinging Stone attack. Going to exhaust Scarlet Witch to deal with that, so no damage. Then we got Steel Kick. He does have the battle trait, so that's going to be four indirect damage, which is painful. And then another Steel Kick, and that is going to end this attempt because we can't take another four indirect damage without dying. So that's going to be it for this attempt on Absorbing Man. And we'll get reset and try again. In these hero spotlights, I'm not typically going to give up after one loss, but if I get two losses in a row, I'll typically give up. Unless something really weird has happened. So, get set up again, and we'll see how we do on attempt number two. Gonna discard Magic Shield and United We Stand for the Mulligan. Didn't get anything more useful. So, probably we'll get out Ironheart, though. Summoning Spell has the most potential for value, but it could also be a dud if I just get a two cost ally or something like that. Get Spider Man. Not that great, to be honest. Yes, it is three cost, but Spider Man's response only works after he is played from your hand so we just get his stats and for three costs just his stats without his response are not that good we can get a hex bolt off so gonna get to draw a card and draw another card and draw another card so two costs for draw three cards that's fine that's strong can use the two cards to get rapid response out and we use Spider-Man and Scarlet Witch to get rid of the side scheme. So we're just going to tank the attack from Absorbing Man. We do need to get an environment into play, which should have happened at the beginning of the game. Rocky Outcrop. And then our two encounter cards are Steel Kick, so three indirect damage and ball and chain which is going to get attached to the boss. Get Nick Fury out and draw three cards. Oof, those are bad draws. You'd like one resource card and then something to play with it, or two resource cards and something to play with it, but yikes. Typically at the end of the round I won't keep three resource cards in hand. I don't like to keep more than one unless I have a specific plan for it. So I keep one of the resource cards and then draw four. Nick Fury will tank the attack. Then we got two encounter cards, a scheme for three, four, plus a stun. And then a Hydra regular. Should have added one additional threat, but I think I remember that later. We get Beast out and grab a resource card. 
and then play Sorcerer Supreme as well. So that's a pretty good turn. And we'll take out the Hydra Regular and Dwarf for two. Not really worrying about the stun on Scarlet Witch. We don't do a lot of attacking with her. Hexbolt is a hero action and not an attack, and that's our primary event. Sometimes with Molecular Decay, I might need to remove the, the stun before doing that. The encounter cards are going to be Swinging Stone, so that's going to be a second attack from the boss for one damage, and then discard a random card from the hand. At this point, it's going okay. The health is a little low, the setup is okay. So we'll get out White Tiger and then we'll Hex Bolt. That's going to be 2 damage. That's going to be 2 damage. And that's going to be 2 damage. So we got Phase 2 down to 7 health. And we can deal 2 or Thwart for 2. And then Thwart for 2 here. And then we'll draw 6. And that's going to cycle through the deck, so one more encounter card this round. I have Beast Tank the attack, and we're going to bring him back with Rapid Response here with one damage on him, and that's going to generate a resource card when he enters play. And the first encounter card is going to be Hydra Patrol, and then we got Hydra Regular and Icy Grip, which is going to be a stun, or already stunned. So no problem there. Hydra Patrol is a bit of a pain to deal with. We can uh, get Quicksilver out with Chaos Magic here, which is pretty strong. Got to discard four cards from the encounter deck for that. And then we'll get some damage in. Maybe be able to push through to phase three here. We'll get Kalu into play, I think. I decide I'll cycle White Tiger out because I'm going to bring Kalu in. And we'll use Beast to push into phase three. And we'll get Kalu in and look through the top five for an event. There's a Hex Bolt. And we'll go ahead and attack, and then United We Stand to heal one from three characters. Now here I make a mistake, because my plan is likely going to be for Kalu to, to take the boss attack. So I should have healed for one off of Scarlet Witch, rather than Kalu. Not a mistake, but a bad decision which means I could have had one more HP on Scarlet Witch. So the Hex Bolt, we get a stun on the boss. We get Remove 2 Threat, and I'm thinking I don't really want to do that, so I'm going to re-roll here with Scarlet Witch's Hero Power. Because if I remove Hydra Patrol, it's going to bring a minion back, and I don't immediately have a way to deal with it. Hoping I can down the boss before I need to remove any more threat from this point. But I have two threat removal, and I don't know that it's a optional thing. If I could choose not to do it, I would have, but I didn't think it was optional. I think you have to do it if you can. So the Hydra regular comes back into play when the side quest is defeated. And I'm going to throw away Magic Shield and draw six. So we got an attack coming in on Kalu. And then two damage from the Hydra Regular. And then two encounter cards. Pretty low health, but I'm hoping to end the scenario in a turn or two. And now I just remember that there shouldn't have been an attack because the boss was stunned. So we walk that back and remove the stun. And then we got two encounter cards. 
and under fire kind of bring two more so a new environment avalanche I'm gonna discard a lightning resource rather than take the indirect damage and that takes care of the under fire with the assault so now it's gonna go on Kalu and he gets a extra threat on the main quest because of his forced response when he has the ice trait and the next encounter card is going to exhaust Scarlet Witch no way I can deal 15 damage this turn get out Maria Hill and draw a card Hexbolt, that's a good draw So I'll get some damage in. I should have just removed the avalanche. I don't know what I was thinking, except I think I was hoping that next turn would be the last turn. So I'm going to use United We Stand to heal. Debatably, I should have hex bolted here. I don't know about holding warp, warp reality and hex bolt in hand. So the boss's attack will go on Maria Hill. Then we got two encounter cards, a new environment. Caught off guard, Drip Sorcerer Supreme. And then Duplication, which is going to deal an extra boost card. And once again, I probably don't have enough damage. because I have a stun on Scarlet Witch. I would have had just enough damage if she wasn't stunned. But we'll get a card draw in, a stun, and two threat removal. So no damage, unfortunately. But I'm going to re-roll and try for damage. Nope, card draw. But a card draw is fine, now I can play Miles Morales from hand and get 4 damage in with him. And I'm realizing I don't have enough damage to finish off of Absorbing Man, so I'm going to choose not to retire Quicksilver right now. I'll just use his attack once. If Scarlet Witch wasn't stunned, I would have finished off the boss this round guaranteed or if I'd gotten four damage off the hex bolt and three threat coming in from the boost icon and avalanche and I realized I'd forgotten a threat at this point so I added that and then Remove the stun, and we got two encounter cards. All we need to do is survive those, and that will end the game. And it's a stall tactic, so that's going to add three threat. And a second stall tactic, and that's going to end this attempt in a loss. So unfortunately, two losses in a row to Absorbing Man on Heroic 1 difficulty. So Scarlet Witch got past the initial challenge. And I do believe that in this scenario, I misplayed. I think I probably could have won if I'd played it better. I'm not going to hold that against Scarlet Witch. But we can see what she can do at her best, and we can also see what her weakness is. And one of her big weaknesses is a reliance on Sorcerer Supreme for resource generation. And, in addition, a reliance on Chaos Magic, and those are only two cards in a 40-card deck, and Sorcerer Supreme gets dealt with by the encounter card that discards, upgrades, or supports. That card is in, like, every encounter deck. And Scarlet Witch doesn't really run any other upgrades, so that encounter card is pretty much always going to take out Sorcerer Supreme. 
which is troublesome, but the heroes that do the best in Marvel Champions are the ones that come with resource generation built into them. Scarlet Witch doesn't, so she has to rely on Sorcerer Supreme and Chaos Magic, and those are only two cards in a 40-card deck, which means she is somewhat unreliable. And her ceiling is, her power ceiling is not that high. But let's try out her Mighty Avengers version against Absorbing Man. Alrighty, we're back and we'll see how the Mighty Avengers deck does against Absorbing Man on Heroic 1 difficulty. It is my opinion that the Mighty Avengers decks are better in general for heroes with the Avenger trait than the standard leadership deck, but it's close. It's not a huge power upgrade. Probably not large enough to recommend going out and buying the Mighty Avengers card specifically, but you do get them already when you get the Mad Titan Shadow box, and that is a very important box for leadership because it has White Tiger and Kalu. I'm going to use Chaos Magic to get out White Tiger here and draw two cards. And we can set up team training and probably play a hex bolt as well. But we'll play the hex bolt first and see how that goes. First up, draw a card. That's fine. And remove two threat. And deal two damage. And then we can go ahead and play another hex bolt and still have the resources to play team training. So that's going to be another two damage. And draw another card. And remove two threat. In the future for these gameplay videos I may play back the Gameplay at an accelerated rate. I'm not sure yet. So that I'll be able to cover more and still... Well, the point of the gameplay is to demonstrate what the hero can do. We'll see. Anyway, we got the hero attacking, or the villain attacking, rather. It was a strong turn one with White Tiger team training and a couple of hex bolts. Off to a good start. And I haven't picked, grabbed the environment yet, but there it comes. And don't want to have any undefended attacks, if possible, since the environments have effects if there are any undefended attacks. So White Tiger goes down to the boss attack. And we got Piercing Thorns, that's going to be a random discard. And Under Fire, which is going to be two more encounter cards. Omnimorph Duplication, which is going to be a boost card for the boss. And Caught Off Guard, which is going to get rid of team training. Generally, the encounter cards are pretty mild when it comes in the Absorbing Man scenario. And we got Warp Reality. Yeah, so here I'd reconsidered and I decided that it was worth protecting team training. So I played Warp Reality to cancel the cutoff card so that I could keep team training. And on the hero turn, all I can do is play Quinjet and then draw five. And so on the boss's turn, the attack is going to go on Scarlet Witch for one damage, no problem. And then two encounter cards coming in. Slipping Sanity, so I have no choice but to do the top, discard the top five cards of the encounter deck since she's already exhausted. And there's just one boost icon, so one threat added. The obligation for Scarlet Witch really isn't that bad. And then we got Ball and Chain attached to the boss. So we'll add one counter to Quinjet and probably get out Mighty Avengers here. 
And then assuming I survive this turn, I'll be in pretty good shape with Mighty Avengers and team training. So we got an attack that's going to deal some damage, and then got encounter cards coming in. Omnimorph duplication again, a pretty mild encounter card. Just deals one boost card, and then Hydra Patrol. Okay, so now we can get out uh, probably Hawkeye here. Though you could make a case for Captain America, even though he's going to cost five. But we'll go with Hawkeye. Then we'll get in an attack, or we'll get in a thwart on the Hydra Patrol for two. That should that is a mistake if I don't walk that back because you can take out the Hydra Patrol and then Hawkeye's arrows can take out the enemy that comes in. So very efficient. And yep, yeah, here I here I realize my mistake. Need to search for a minion. It can just be a Hydra regular with two health, and Hawkeye's arrows can immediately take it out. There we go. And then we're on to the boss phase. So the attack is going to go on Scarlet Witch again. And we got some more damage coming in. And then the encounter cards, Piercing Thorns is going to be a random discard. And Exhaustion. Another attack. Uh, I probably have to have that go on Hawkeye or I may die. Which is terribly inefficient. So I actually realize he doesn't die. The attack deal 3 damage and he had 4 HP thanks to team training. So he does live, that's good. We're up to three counters on Quinjet, not enough for Quicksilver or Falcon. I could get Kalu into play. That's not a very efficient use of Quinjet. So I decide not to do that. I'm going to play a Hex Bolt. Get to draw a card. I'm saving Falcon in hand to play with Quinjet next round. Captain Marvel. Draw a card. Quinjet and get a stun on the boss. So that's a good hex bolt. Very strong hex bolt. I should probably consider getting a confuse on the boss instead for the additional card draw. And I do eventually decide to do that. So, we've cycled through the encounter deck once, we've got a boost icon there, and Hawkeye Arrow does 2 damage to the Hydra Soldier, a new environment, and a Piercing Thorns. I haven't made that much progress because we've been using our resources to ramp up with team training in Mighty Avengers. And that's going to start paying off pretty quickly. So we can use Quinjet to get Falcon into play. And we're going to check the top three cards for treacheries to see how much threat we get to remove. Just one. And then we're going to Hex Bolt for sure, probably get Stinger into play as well. So that's going to be 2 damage on the Hydra Soldier. It's going to deal an additional encounter card. And then remove 2 threat. And then deal 2 more damage. So Falcon can deal 3 damage. We get Stinger in, she can deal 2 damage. Gonna thwart for 3 instead. Hawkeye will save for a chump block. Stinger can deal 2 damage. 
now I reconsider on Falcon. Gonna have Scarlet Witch Thor for two, Falcon will deal three. And then we'll go ahead and draw five. So the setup is very strong now. Though we got a lot of encounter cards coming in this round. And there's an acceleration token on the main scheme. Hawkeye will tank the boss attack and then we're going to have four encounter cards. New environments. Piercing thorns. And a stun. And a steel kick. That's a tough card. And a scheme. So we'll definitely be able to move into phase two here. Hydra Patrol down to one HP. That is concerning. Got Chaos Magic, but not a real good target to spend it on. Maybe a Molecular Decay, but there's a stun on Scarlet Witch, so I can't do that. So we're just going to Hex Bolt. Hopefully I draw something that I can Chaos Magic into play. That's going to be a stun. That's good. Now I decide on a Confuse instead. Well, now I get a stun as well. And then two damage, which is going to push Absorbing Man into phase three. So I can go ahead and attack for two, and attack for three, and then flip to Alter Ego and draw five. Or I could stay. Since the boss is stunned and confused, I guess I decide to stay in hero form here. Remove the stun, and then we got two encounter cards, and as long as we survive those, we're in pretty good shape. Got caught off guard, that'll get rid of the Quinjet, which probably isn't going to have enough time to build up anyway, because this may be the last turn. And then stall tactics, that's going to generate two threat. And now we can Chaos Magic Captain Marvel into play. As long as we get a lightning resource when we discard cards. So we discard five from Chaos Magic. Captain Marvel's response discards four. And we get two lightning resources, so that's going to be deal three damage and stun the boss. And then we can use our allies to finish off the boss without even needing the Chaos Magic. Or the uh, Hex Bolt, but I'm going to Hex Bolt anyway. I don't know if I didn't count or if I was just wanting to finish it with Hex Bolt. I don't know what I was doing here, because I have enough damage with just the allies. Here we go. Four damage from Captain Marvel. And three from Falcon. And two from Stinger. And that will end the scenario. So, Mighty Avengers gets the Absorbing Man down on Heroic 1 difficulty on the first try. After failing it twice with the standard leadership deck. This of course does not prove that Mighty Avengers is the superior version because it's a small sample size, but my opinion is that it is. It feels better to play the Mighty Avengers version with the cost reduction of Quinjet, the Captain America, Captain Marvel. Captain America and Captain Marvel and Giant Man are very, very good plays with Chaos Magic, very high impact plays. So the Mighty Avengers deck works quite well with Scarlet Witch, in my opinion. I like it better, and I believe it's stronger. 
let's move on to the next scenario on our list, which is going to be crossbones on Heroic 1 difficulty. Here we go. Once again using the Mighty Avengers deck and crossbones, in my opinion, another step up in difficulty from Absorbing Man on Heroic 1 difficulty. And we're going to get going to mulligan most of the hand there. And get out Maria Hill for sure and probably X-Bolt as well. After flipping to hero form. That's no that's of no use, so we're gonna re-roll it with Scarlet Witch here. And we draw a card. If I could draw one more card, I could play White Tiger. That would be great. Just marking Scarlet Witch to indicate she's used her once per phase ability. That's two damage. And that is remove two threat, which is of no use. So not that great of a White Tiger, or a Hex Bolt, really. Gonna use the other Hex Bolt to play for, pay for Stinger. And then we'll just get in some damage with the allies and Scarlet Witch. And I'm supposed to reveal a card from the Experimental Weapons deck, which I haven't realized yet, but I will in just a moment. So Crossbones Machine Gun does no damage there. And we got another second assault from the villain. So here I realized I need an Experimental Weapon, plus one attack and ranged. And Crossbones Machine Gun goes off again. And the second attack will go on Maria Hill. We got Cornered Staff, so probably need to place additional threat. Got to discard a card and see. Yeah, one more threat. Okay. So we have Chaos Magic to get Captain Marvel into play. That's very strong. And then we discard four. No, or one lightning resource this time. So we get the three damage, but not the stun. And can't play white tiger here. But I can attack for three. Or thwart and get rid of that side quest. And then United we stand to heal for two. Discard Quicksilver, draw four. So it's going okay so far. No Sorcerer Supreme. No Mighty Avengers do have team training, so Slipping Sanity, there's only one option, that's discard five. One boost icon is going to finish off the phase one, which means another experimental weapons card. And Powered Gauntlets, that one kind of needs to be dealt with. And then we got Full Auto, which is going to be discard three and deal damage for the boost icons which is rough. Let's zero, one, and one. Not that bad, just two damage. So here I opt for White Tiger, draw two, then Hex Bolt. The other option would really be White Tiger, draw two, and then Team Training. Not sure which one was correct. So remove two threat. I'm going to re-roll that with Scarlet Witch. Yeah, same result. Then deal two damage. And then draw a card. So 
we'll put the boss into phase 3 here, which means another card off the experimental weapons deck. And boss's attack will go on White Tiger. And he gets into second evac a second activation, which is a big deal. So it's three, four, five damage. I probably should put this attack on Captain Marvel. Eh, I don't know. I could take the three damage. Actually what I should do is warp reality. Oh wait, it was a boost card, so I can't warp reality. So, three damage, and then we got Legions of Hydra. I can warp reality that, and I'm going to need to do that. And I had to discard Magic Shield there because of Powered Gauntlets which make you discard a card when you take damage from an attack. So I can Warp Reality on the Legions of Hydra, cancel all the effects, discard three off the top of the deck with the three boost icons, and then raid the armory for one, and then discard until a weapon is discarded. There's only four cards left. And on the fourth card there is another weapon. That is unfortunate. or cycle through the deck once. Our setup is really not good. This does not look good at all. I'm gonna thwart with Captain Marvel. Flip to Alter Ego because otherwise I'm likely to no, I may die. I'm not sure if I would have died there, but flipping to Alter Ego is very dangerous in this quest, in this scenario. Because the schemes are all pretty low threat. So we get the last encounter card, or the last experimental weapon card here. It's the energy shield, the worst one. Madam Hydra, and this is looking like a, a loss at this point. The encounter deck has ramped up way more than my deck has. With all the attachments, minions in play, this Scarlet Witch deck looks overmatched in this particular instance. just thinking to myself if there's anything that I can do at this point. I don't have enough resources to play two molecular decays. I can discard two cards. How much damage would I actually need? I think I would have needed like three each time. A reroll. and got zero again and then one so I'm short by six damage so I needed actually like four boost icons and then three which doesn't exist so it was impossible I was always going to be a little short magic shield that's not going to be the thing that saves me Captain Marvel can tank the attack. I'm not sure why I haven't just re-rolled already. Or re-shuffled uh, already because this is pointless. Yep. So 
So I can actually survive, but I don't have a way to deal two, 10 damage and any kind of pressure at all here will kill me. So I wonder, okay, so if I hadn't gotten Crossbones' as armor, maybe if I had, like, gotten a four damage out of the Hex Bolt and a card draw, or, I don't know, two damage and two card draw, and then could play Molecular Decay and get a good Molecular Decay off. So we would have been at eight, five, yeah, that was doable, but Crossbones' armor gives extra damage, and so that's not going to happen now. So we re get reset, reset up, and we'll try this scenario again using this Mighty Avengers deck. It was a good attempt. The things have gone a little bit differently. Could have been a victory, but just a little bit of luck. So we'll get, likely get team training into play right away. I'll opt for the hex bolt first. And energy shield is one that really needs to be dealt with right away. It's going to be two damage, two damage. and two damage. So six damage for two, that's good. And then we'll play team training and deal one more damage. I decide not to deal the damage because I don't want to take the retaliate. So the attack is for first three damage from Crossbones Machine Gun, and then the attack, which will defend, is going to be for three, so one more damage. And then two encounter cards, which is Crossbones Assault and Crossbones Assault. Well, that's game over. Because each time those are defeated, Crossbones activates. I can't tank that many attacks, and those boost icons are going to run through these main schemes very fast. So that's game over, just a bad draw there. But I'll re-roll and try again. Normally I would call it quits after two failures, but in that case it was so clearly just a bad roll that I decided I'd do one more. Get Mighty Avengers out right away. Deal one damage. Machine Gun will deal three, that's rough. Attack will deal two, ouch. And then we got a Hydra Flame Soldier and another attack, and this is going to have a surge, and this is likely to just end this attempt immediately. One from the machine gun. And yeah, that ends it. So, one pretty decent attempt on crossbones, and then two short and brutal ones. A consequence of the, well, Mighty Avengers needs to ramp up and you have to be okay with a couple of turns of lackluster defenses. So is Mighty Avengers the better leadership deck? It depends. I think it depends. In some situations, I think it is. 
I do think it did better against Absorbing Man. Against Crossbones, though, you have to be fast getting allies into play to block, and you can't really afford a turn to play Mighty Avengers. So, maybe not in this scenario. But we'll test out Mighty Avengers with more heroes and standard leadership decks as well and see how it goes. This video ran pretty long for this year at First Hero Spotlight, so I may in the future play back the gameplay videos at an accelerated rate and talk in more in general terms about how the hero is doing and just pause more if I want to say something more in depth as opposed to going through every single action in the gameplay because then the videos are all going to run very long and I will be able to get to fewer heroes. But for the next video we'll go more in depth about Scarlet Witch and we'll do a deck spotlight likely for the first leadership's deck and then we'll also talk a little bit about the Mighty Avengers one as well. So thank you for watching.